Recently, Hoyoverse released a developer discussion post on Genshin's official website where they talk about some of the features they have in development. Overall, the topics which the developers cover in the post are good, and I found some of them to be extremely interesting in particular. So, considering that we got our first real Fontaine teaser a few days after the release of the developer discussion, it appears to me that Fontaine is steering the game towards a very good direction. Of course, I am being hopeful here, but it's not unjustified. Let me tell you why. A short while ago, I made a video regarding the top 5 major gameplay changes that Fontaine should add to Genshin. And one of those 5 changes was the diving mechanic that was confirmed recently by Hoyoverse. Now, while the diving mechanic is nice, and yes, I will address it later, I want to specifically talk about some of the other changes that I discussed in that video. Consider this to be a follow-up to that video with all the recent information we got from the developers and their statement about the future permanent gameplay modes. I'll quickly summarize the minor changes that were mentioned in case you are not familiar with the post. The developers mentioned that they are working on a number of quality of life changes, such as a feature to reorient the player in the direction of their objective by automatically opening a map into the quest location. This is a nice feature that came out with Star Rail and soon it will be implemented into Genshin as well. Furthermore, the developers are adjusting the quest indicators and sorting systems to make it easier for players to find uh, the quests that they want. Uh, I previously made a video discussing the big flaw of Genshin Impact's map design, where I explained why the maps of the Chasm and Enconomia should be directly overlaid beneath their geographic locations, while allowing players to switch between the underworld and overworld map layouts with a single button. Now, I do not want to re-explain the entire topic again. If you are interested, I will leave a link in the description to that video. The reason I'm bringing this up is that Hoyoverse announced that they are developing maps for underground locations, and while this is absolutely nice addition to the game, it is different from the topic I discussed in the video. That being said, the fact that they are considering the addition of underground maps gives me hope that they are, well, capable of layering in Konomiya and the Chasm's maps beneath where they should be geographically. And this would be much easier for all players to access those maps instead of having to go into the menu and look for the map that they want. Alright, let us get to the main topic of this video. Some of you might remember me saying that I am making a video about the top 10 quality of life changes that Fontaine should add, but I was holding off on it because I was waiting for something. This developer statement was the thing I was waiting for because I felt that something like that was going to be released around this time period, Hoyovers usually does this. Now luckily, none of what the developers are working on or none of what they discussed is in my top 10 quality of life list, so I won't have to make any changes to that video or the uh, list itself. And at the end of the developer discussion, Hoyoverse mentions that they are working on future permanent game modes. And this is what I wanted to talk about, this is why I'm making this video. Uh, hopefully, ones that are relevant to the gameplay of Genshin, what they are developing... Let me tell you what I mean. Genshin's trading card game feels like it should have been its own separate game, but Hoyoverse were not confident enough in its potential, so they turned it into a Genshin game mode. So, here is what I have to say about this topic. So, the developers basically started their statement with the following. The developers are currently working on optimizing issues brought on by multi-stage nature prerequisite quests. We plan to uh, plot out current prerequisite quest completion process. So, essentially what they're saying over here is that for new players and returning players, they want to uh, streamline and uh, reorder quests, especially ones that are uh, prerequisites to other quests and ones that are inter interconnected and interwined, because many quests in Genshin rely on one another. Uh, there are many world quests and many Archon quests that have to be completed in order to proceed and do other world quests and other Archon quests. And because of that, it can be very overwhelming for new players, especially uh, new and returning players, because Genshin has many quests, and Genshin is only going to increase the number of quests that it has as more countries and more nations uh, get introduced to the game. So, for me, this is not a problem whatsoever, but I understand that for many players, especially new players, this can be a very big problem. So, it's a good change. But moving on to the thing that I actually want to discuss, these are the quest and map system optimizations we'd like to announce, and then they say the Divine Ingenuity Collectors chapter was, uh, event was released. Uh, during this time, we also discovered many in uh, interesting custom domains created by the community and also heard the calls for making time limited events permanent. Here, we would like to take the opportunity to chat with everyone regarding our thoughts about permanent gameplay modes. For certain Genshin Impact gameplay events, the development team has already considered the possibility of making them permanent fixtures during the inception of their development. This is very much normal, this is uh, not something that is uh, out of place. Every single, at least the vast majority of video game developers do this. They always evaluate how future-proof and how malleable it is to change, and if it is very good then it will be added permanently to the game, if it's not then it just gets added uh, as, well, as a time-limited event. Uh, however, based on our eval or sometimes gets even scrapped. 
However, based on our evaluations, uh, certain gameplay events are not uh, fleshed out enough in terms of uh, content to support long-time uh, gameplay experience for everyone. We'll combine feedback from our travelers regarding gameplay events in the future iterations and we'll release permanent gameplay options at the right time. So, uh, a while ago, Genshin Impact, or the developers of Genshin Impact, they did a uh, interview with the GameSpot, I believe it was GameSpot, and in that interview, they said a message or they said a statement that was not uh, it, it was not conveyed well to the uh, vast majority of the player base, where they said they do not want to make Spiral Abyss 2.0. When I read that statement, in my mind, I uh, realized that they were saying they do not want to make Spiral Abyss 2.0 because that would be very lazy, very boring, and a lot of players are not going to like that. Because having to do Spiral Abyss in two different nations, like one Spiral Abyss in Fontaine, one Spiral Abyss in Mondstadt, that's like, it's not fun. It's like doing the laundry twice. It's not actually fun and interesting gameplay modes that players can enjoy. It's not good endgame. Spiral Abyss, especially floor 9 to 11, floor 12 can be fun sometimes, but it can also be a chore uh, for many players. So, uh, this uh, confirms to me two things. First of all, the developers are working on uh, permanent gameplay modes, permanent endgame. And the second thing that this confirms for me is that the developers of Genshin, uh, they do not have anything that is going to be coming out in Fontaine. And this is why I mentioned the video that I released, top five gameplay changes that Fontaine has to be releasing in order to at least match the quality of Sumeru. And the fifth option that I proposed, the fifth gameplay change, was a permanent end game mode that players can actually play in Genshin and test out the limits of their account. In that very video, I said that I do not expect anything major until patch 4.3 minimum. And this statement basically confirms this. I do not think Fontaine is going to have any major endgame permanent gameplay content until minimum 4.3. This is the minimum. Realistically speaking, I wouldn't even be surprised if it goes beyond 4.4, 4.5, even into like 4.6. But at least this confirms that yes, they are working on endgame content. Now, in the future, the development team will continue to plan out more permanent content. We hope to bring more interesting experiences for our travelers. What interesting experiences could the developers do? The best possible endgame mode for Genshin Impact would be not necessarily a copy-paste. In fact, let me say this. Never copy-paste from another game because copy-pasting, number one, it's, it's very lazy. Number two, most of the time, it doesn't translate well to different games. But... In Diablo 3, the Nephilim Rifts, anyone here who is watching this video that played Diablo 3 realizes how well Nephilim Rifts would translate as a permanent endgame mode for Genshin, especially in terms of combat, because those are basically the peak combat of Diablo 3, and currently Diablo 4 is uh, developing a new endgame mode that is similar to that for Diablo 4. There are four games that I think Genshin should take inspiration from when it comes to permanent endgame combat content. And those games are Hades, Path of Exile, Diablo as a series in general, and Star Rail. Star Rail has the simulated universe, which is basically just an improved version of the Labyrinth Warrior events, which was ran in patch 2.2 uh, with uh, Tortalia and Shinyan. And Diablo 3 and Diablo soon to be Diablo 4, they have Nephilim Rifts. Path of Exile has basically the exact same uh, concept, except it's basically just their own thing. I think that Nephilim Rifts, or a combination of Nephilim Rifts, and simulated universe in Genshin would be absolutely amazing. Now, should Genshin actually copy-paste Nephilim Rifts from Diablo and simulated universe from Star Rail? No, I do not think so. I'm What I am saying here, just so that no one misunderstands me, and I know that people are going to misunderstand me, unfortunately. I am saying that they should take inspiration primarily from Diablo and primarily from Honkai Star Rail and then make something unique for their own. Ideally speaking, if they can come up with something completely new, something that basically elevates the industry to a whole new level, then sure, that would be cool. That being said, for the vast majority of video games, developers take inspirations from different games. So I do think that Simulated Universe and, uh, well, Diablo 3's Nephilim Rifts, they are very, very good starting points in addition to Hades. That also has very good uh, gameplay loops. If they can take inspiration from that and then develop something from that for Genshin, that would be absolutely amazing. Uh, do I think it's coming anytime soon? As I said, 4.3 minimum. Uh, do not expect anything before that. 
But at least, at the very least, this confirms that Toyverse is indeed working on something for Genshin, and hopefully it will be uh, out with Fontaine. This is all I have to say for now. I think this is very interesting. I think that uh, Genshin, or at least this confirms that Toyverse are doing uh, are doing major work behind the scenes, and hopefully, hopefully they do deliver. Hopefully the permanent endgame mode is going to be good. I want it to be difficult. I do not think that... Uh... Here's the thing with difficulty. When it comes to difficulty in a game like Genshin, you have two audiences. You have people who want it. You have people who... Actually, it's three. You have people who want it. You have people who do not care. And then you have people who do not want it because they're scared that they're going to miss out on uh, certain... Uh, what's it called? Certain rewards. It's This is super easy to balance. Just make the major rewards accessible for uh, people who do not care or, or people who do not want to do difficult content and then make the rewards for difficult content either rewards that are cosmetic or re and cosmetic means nothing because cosmetic does not actually affect the gameplay or rewards that are, well, useful for the account, but in very limited quantities and are not very, uh, very useful. Like, basically just put the Primo Gems for all the players who do not care, put them at the easiest difficulty, and then keep the, the hard stuff for, or the stuff that is irrelevant for the harder difficulties. Uh, but this is everything that I have to say for now. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And uh, let me know down in the comments what your ideas are for Endgame. Uh, in my opinion, this, this uh, developer statement for Hoyerverse was very good. But this is all I have to say for now. Take care, and I'll see you in the next time.